You are listening to Talking Images, the official podcast of icmforum.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Chris, and today we'll be talking about rewatches because it's really not as simple as seeing the same film again. Seeing a film a second, a third, or even a fourth or a tenth time can really change your opinion and experience. And not just that, something has fundamentally changed even before you press play. You now know the plot and the story. If there are twists, you see what clues you were given. If there is a tragic ending, you may see the happy moments with a clear, melancholic sense of doom. To many, the second viewing is a way to focus on the filmmaking itself, to distance themselves from the story and admire the craft, perhaps get caught up in loopholes and terrible logic. For others, it is simply getting to know an old friend and getting the same great experience once again. Every viewing provides an opportunity to see something new. And in the time between each viewing, your taste and perhaps even your life may have changed drastically. There may even be films which you just weren't ready for the first time around, be that in terms of maturity or knowing the style or what to expect. More interestingly, the mind is an odd, odd thing, and you may end up shadow boxing your previous experience, which may, thanks to your memory, have very little to do with the actual film, but rather be a patchwork of oversaturated dream images in a collage of great lines, laughs, and visuals that may not even exist. In this episode, we will talk about the rewatches that changed everything for us. Try to get into the core of what the rewatch experience really gives us and talk about our own rewatch habits. With me today, as always, are Tom, Lauren, and Saul. So let's just start with a very quick and easy question. How often do you rewatch films? Hi, this is Tom here. I don't rewatch films very often, to be honest. I had a quick look through my viewing stats for the year so far, and out of 361 films, only 14 were rewatches, and the majority of those were films that I wanted to rewatch so that we could discuss them in more depth on the podcast. I've got a huge watch list of films, so I would always much prefer to delve into a film that I haven't seen instead of re-watching a film that I know I've enjoyed. I like that Chris mentions the phrase shadow box in your past memories and experiences because I think he's hit the nail on the head with me there. I'm always concerned that on a rewatch, I'm not going to enjoy a film as much the second time around. This is Lauren. So when I was younger, I used to rewatch films quite a bit. I could rewatch films pretty much all the time. But the last few years, it's been very rare. This year, I've watched 122 films and only three of them were rewatches. But some years, they've been close to 80. But like Tom, I prefer to experience a new film and a new experience rather than revisiting an old one. Although I do think that I should rewatch more. Hi, it's Sol from Australia. In terms of re-watching, I've re-watched 48 films this year, which might seem a lot, but that's out of 897 in total so far. So it's only around 5% of what I'm watching is stuff that I've seen before. Like Tom, a number of my re-watches this year have been due to the podcast. They've also been due to the challenges and other things going on on the ICM forum. Going back a few years ago, before I joined iCheck Movies, I was re-watching 100 to 200 films each year. Since joining, that's gone down to between 40 to 80, which I think is a good number, but I do think that I owe it to myself to be re-watching more films more often. I think I'm more or less in the same box as all at present though with a completely different uh, trajectory so I, I never actually counted how many films I rewatch every year for reasons not related to this episode I somehow made a list this year and I'm up to 24 which I think is also about 5% of what I've uh, seen this year however for me that's more of an all-time high because for as long as I can remember I was always really really focused on watching new films and getting those new experiences and I do think I was robbing myself of a lot of great rewatch experiences leading up to that. So I know Lauren already answered the question a bit, but do you think you should be rewatching more or less films? And regardless of your answer, why? I think that I should probably be rewatching more films. 
As you mentioned, Chris, there's a lot of films that you may watch early on in your life where you're quite not ready for them yet. For whatever reason, you're not mature enough to appreciate the artistry behind them, or they don't resonate with you because they reflect on experiences that are unknown to you at that stage in your life. So when I was working through the classics when I was younger, there was quite a few films that I dismissed because they didn't resonate with me. But I imagine if I revisited them now, they may grow on me. But because I'm not sure, that's why I'm kind of tentative about re-watching them, because I'd rather take a punt on an unknown film than revisiting something where it may be a better experience, but I'm not quite sure about it yet. I think I should be watching more for the same sort of reasons, except my taste in film seems to stay mostly the same, but then I just have random changes that happen. And a few years ago, I did start a rewatch project where I was going to rewatch all my favorite films to see if they were still my favorite films. But then a whole bunch of stuff changed, and now my taste in films has changed again, so I have to restart all that. Um, I just haven't got around to it yet. But I think, depending on my mood and things that have happened, even things like reading about a film from a different perspective or a different opinion of it can just give me a new set of eyes to see a film with. So I do like to revisit them occasionally. It's just... I haven't done that lately, but I definitely want to. I do think I should be re-watching more films, even though I seem to have re-watched the most out of everybody on the podcast tonight. With re-watching, I do empathise with what Thomas said about looking for a better experience with some of the classics that I might have watched earlier on when I wasn't quite ready for them. And there's always that apprehension that I'm going to dislike it again or it's going to be mediocre for me again. But I don't think it's just acclaimed classics that I didn't get that I should be re-watching. I think a lot of the films that I consider to be my favourites or I consider to be high up there, I think I should be revisiting and partly to refresh myself about what made them so great because when they come up in conversation, the worst thing possible is going, oh, I know I liked it, but I can't remember that much about it. But also because I watch a lot of mediocre films that I have never seen. And it's just really good being able to give yourself that pleasure of going back and seeing those classics that you love or seeing those all-time favourites. So it's like a bit of a more rounded film-going experience rather than just watching all these new films, which is sort of like meh or okay or good. You've actually got some really good stuff in there to help you keep you really fresh and really enjoying the craft. Something which Lauren said, which I also agree with, is that reading up about a film can make me want to re-watch it with a different perspective. I don't often do it, but if somebody posts something which is really interesting about a film, it will make me really want to go back and re-watch and see if I can take that same thing away from it myself. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as you guys in that I really think I should be watching a lot more. And that's also one of the things I find so great about this podcast because it made me rewatch a lot more and made me realize that rewatching is absolutely fantastic because you can get all of these great experiences again. In many cases, it's been, you know, well, well over a decade since I saw some of these films for the first time. So I almost go in blind again, which is really, really great for me. And many times my taste has changed so much that I see them in such a different way. I think all of you talked about rewatching your favorite films. Is that something you do quite often? How often would you say that you rewatch your very favorite film? So my current favorite film is A Clockwork Orange, which I talked about on one of our very first podcast episodes. And I don't actually rewatch it that often at all. Basically, I like to leave a long period between my rewatches so that when I revisit films a second or even a third time, most of it has kind of faded. I'll have a recollection of the plot and what goes on, etc. But if you leave a film long enough between the rewatch, it can be like having that same incredible experience all over again. A recent example was with Barry Lyndon, which I perhaps watched about 10 years ago in the cinema and it's been sitting on my shelf for about six or seven years on the blu-ray and i dug it out and watched it a few months back and whilst i remembered most of what happened in the plot a lot of it was completely fresh and new to me as if i was watching it for the first time and getting that incredible experience for a second time is something that i really relish and that is perhaps another reason why i don't like to re-watch favorites of mine too often i also like to leave a big gap between my watches because I like them to fade as much as possible before I go back. 
My favourite film is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but I don't have like a set, oh, it's been two years, I might as well rewatch it now. It's just if I feel like watching it, I'll watch it. I think I've only watched that six times in the last 15 years, but that seems to work for me. And once it's faded enough that I start thinking about it again, I'll probably revisit it. Tom and Lauren have brought up some very good points about trying to let your favourites fade a bit in your mind. But in terms of what I actually go for, I found with Videodrome, which is my current number one, I've been watching that on a yearly basis for the last few years. Scream, which is also my top five, I've been watching it once a year, every year. For most of my top favourites, though, I'd say maybe once every one to two years, which isn't a very long time, they often fade. But with something which is really complex, like Solaris, that was really good, even though I'd only seen it maybe 18 months beforehand. I'd already forgotten some of the details because it's a very dense film. There's a lot going in on there. There's some shots that I completely didn't remember at all. So I do think it is good to sometimes with some films, give them a little bit longer. But with films where there's lots going on there, I feel I can watch them quite regularly and still get a lot out of it. Also, knowing something like Videodrome or the Scream quadrilogy quite well, it's often actually fun to go back and rewatch it. It's got to the point where I know a lot of the dialogue near verbatim in the Scream movies, but I still absolutely love it because of how well it's constructed, how great the character interactions are, which I know doesn't really quite give a straight answer, and I guess I can't give a straight answer. Some films, yeah, I like to live a little bit longer, but other films I find that I can just keep watching them again and again and still get a lot out of them. For me, I think it actually varies a lot from film to film. So my favorite film used to be A Clockwork Orange, just like Tom. And that's actually a case where I almost felt like I rewatched that too many times. I think I rewatched that probably five times over a four-year period. And it kind of worn out its welcome a little bit. I mean, I still loved it, but I started seeing a lot of the things happening in it as very obvious. It didn't seem as intense anymore. It lost some of that power. I understood like the rhythm that it's just circular. And at that point, I was no longer as impressed by it. So in that case, it was almost a case of just realizing that, oh, some films could, at least for me, be harmed by seeing them too many times in relatively quick succession. But then my current all-time favorite film is Last Year at Marienbad. I think that's a film you can really just rewatch over and over again, because I saw that twice in very close uh, period, seeing it just before our previous podcast on our favorite film as well. And I'd just seen it a few months earlier. And the reason why I think that's so much fun to go back to is that there's so many interpretations and so much going on that every single time you see it, it's almost like a different experience and you can pick up different clues and see it in a different way. So some films just really benefit, like Saul said, from seeing them many, many times in quick succession. Do you think it's possible to rewatch a film too many times? Do all films get hurt if you rewatch them too many times? Or are there films you can just rewatch over and over again and still just get that exact same thrill? I feel like it is possible to rewatch a film too many times. As you said, Chris, your appreciation for A Clockwork Orange started to gradually fade a bit after you had revisited it so many times. And that is something that is always a concern when I'm rewatching a film. On the flip side of that, though, I do feel that there are some films that benefit from frequent viewings. I don't rewatch these films so much now, but perhaps in my late teens, early 20s, I'd be watching a lot of comedies, things like Anchorman, then the American Pie films. And it's kind of like almost a comfort food. You watch them with your friends and you get to learn all the lines and you come to treasure and cherish the characters and they are the kind of films that I feel benefit most from a rewatch. I think it's definitely possible to get worn out from a film but it actually hasn't happened to me. Most of the films that I've rewatched a lot I still really love although when I was younger I used to have a bad habit of getting obsessed with a film and just rewatch it constantly. One example is Sleepwalkers which for some reason I watched every night before I went to sleep for like a month. I don't really know why that film helped me sleep, but I couldn't stop watching it. I mean, it's not like it was a great film, but yeah, I just like rewatching it a lot. So that was kind of a point where it was maybe I shouldn't have been watching that so much. I don't think it's possible to watch a film too many times. If it's a good film, it will continue to stack up to rewatches. It probably is possible to rewatch a film too many times in too short a period. 
I've had that with a few films before. Ghost World, I think I rewatched that maybe three times over six months, which was definitely way too often, and it's sort of worn out its appeal to me a little bit. But then I gave it a little bit longer and watched it again, which was really good. So I think it's just trying to work out with certain films. How long do you give it before looking at it again? But if it is a really good film, it will continue to stack up to rewatches. Maybe not because it's as complex as um, Marion Bard or Solaris. I haven't seen it recently, but I love American Pie and especially American Wedding and all those films there because of the characters there. It's great character dynamics. So it's really fun watching and seeing how these characters are drawn out and the way they interact with each other. This is how I feel with the Oceans trilogy, which I watch about once a year because they've got just such great interaction, great characters. I don't think it's a one-size-fit-all approach. I don't think you can say that there's a set amount of time that you need for each film. I think it varies per film. But I think, you know, all great films will stack up for a rewatch after a certain amount of time. Tying this over to one of the perhaps most important questions in this episode, what is the main reason that you decide to rewatch a film? What are the causes that drive you to pick a film? Why do you choose it and why do you want to rewatch it? The main reason for me choosing to re-watch a film will always be to share it with someone else. Whether I'm sharing it with my girlfriend or friend or family members, I love showing the films that I discover to other people and hoping that they get as much out of them that I do. That is probably the main driver for me to re-watch a film. Although there is another reason as well, which is if I decide that I want to write a review about a film, I will then revisit it to make sure that I can write a good in-depth review. Although sometimes there have been occasions where I've revisited a film with an intention of reviewing it because I remembered it as being a great film. And then I've decided afterwards that perhaps it's not as good as I'd remembered it and I didn't actually go ahead with writing the review. The main reason that I'd rewatch a film would be that I'm just in the mood for it. Like usually it'll be a favourite film and I've just started thinking about it or seen something sort of similar and I just want to revisit it again. I also sometimes re-watch films because I'm doing assignments on them or other sort of activities like that. And the other main reason would be occasionally I'll read about a film that I didn't really like when I'd seen it 10-15 years ago and I read something that just makes me want to revisit it. When I was looking for reviews for um, the They Shoot Zombies site, I'd read about films that I didn't even like, but just reading a review of someone who's really passionate about it would just make it seem like the most amazing thing in the world and I'd like really want to check it out again. So other people's passion for films that I didn't like can excite me enough to go check them out again. I like how you mentioned there, Lauren, that other people's passions can ignite your curiosity for a rewatch. I love it when that happens, when people will give you a, a different stance in a film that perhaps you didn't appreciate or even disliked. And it can kind of open your mindset to thinking, hang on, they might be onto something here. And perhaps giving you that little push to encourage a, a rewatch. One of these films was actually Solaris, since it was brought up earlier, because when I first watched it, I was just kind of like, meh. But then I, I read an interpretation of it straight after that was like, wow, this is really interesting. I thought, I'm just going to wait for it to fade from my memory before checking it out again. And I rewatched it earlier this year, which must have been about 10 years after I first watched it, and my opinion didn't change whatsoever, so I was a little bit disappointed. But sometimes it can work. I'm just disappointed to hear with Solaris because that's one of the big growers for me, which is, I think is something we're going to get to later on. That's one that's definitely boosted a lot in my esteem over the years. In terms of the topic of why I'd rewatch a film, I'd say like Lauren, a lot of it is mood based. It might depend on if I want to discuss it for a podcast, but a lot of it would be probably mood based or based on the challenges that we have on the ICM forum. Sometimes challenges align quite well and I can watch the film. They'll count for two challenges and I'm sort of like, yeah, I wouldn't mind revisiting it. That might be a good time to do so. I don't know if I've really rewatched many films over the years to share it with someone. I know Tom said it's a big one, but I guess I'm living alone so it doesn't really affect me as much. Maybe when I was younger, I might have rewatched something that I might have recommended to my brother or to my parents, but it's not really a big part of it for me. A lot of it's mood-based and sometimes can be affected by other things that are going on, either in the forum or in our podcast schedule. Another thing I might mention, I do occasionally re-watch a film because I've upgraded it to Blu-ray. I want to see what it looks like better in a better format, but the main thing for me would really be mood-based. 
I really like how the podcast has encouraged us to rewatch more as a group and it opens up a great world of possibilities when you all watch a film in a short period of time and have the opportunity to discuss it and listen to other people's different interpretations and it really adds a new dimension to the film watching experience when you get to share that with other people. I also have to say that I love the social element in all of here. That's just such a wonderful way to share the love of cinema. But in your personal preferences, do you prefer rewatching your own favorites or rewatching films that you feel you misjudged? I think that I would always favor rewatching my old favorites over a film that I may have misjudged because I know with old favorites that I'm going to have a good time. But when it's a film I may have misjudged, there's that kind of gray area where, okay, it's meant to be an excellent film. It didn't resonate with me the first time round. It might still not the second time. So I'm always a bit hesitant because when I pick a film, it is because I want to get some enjoyment out of it. Watching films is a relaxing hobby for me and I always want to enjoy my experiences so I'll try and plump for a film that I know I'm going to enjoy when I'm choosing a rewatch. I'll definitely choose an old favourite over something that I think I misjudged although I like revisiting both of those the same reason as that as Tom said with something that I loved once I'm probably going to love it again but with something that I didn't like that's probably going to be the same response the second time and unless I feel like I've significantly changed to appreciate it in a certain way or I need to rewatch it for some reason then I'm probably always going to choose a favorite. This is interesting. I think I might differ a bit from Lauren and Tom. I do have some favourites that I've already talked about that I do watch on a yearly basis and that I love to rewatch. I like the fact that the horror challenge is coming along. I can get back into the Scream quadrilogy. But I'd say in general, I'd prefer to rewatch films that I think I might have misjudged. If I'm watching a film that's maybe not an all time favourite, but it's one that I've rated maybe 8 out of 10 or higher, when I sit down to rewatch it, it comes with a whole lot of expectations and I find a lot of them end up being either disappointments or the films that I liked a lot and I expected to like more the second or third time round and I just didn't. If it's something which I disliked the first time round or I thought was mediocre, there's sort of more room for it to move up in my esteem. Whereas I might use the example of Come and See, which I rewatched just this morning. I watched it and I liked it about the same that I did the first time round. Still a couple of reservations, still quite powerful, but you know, I'm looking at it compared to my other favorites i'm like my reaction's about the same and then i've got something like stalker which i also rewatched this week which was a bit of a disappointment and again a film that i rated quite highly up it's much more exciting for me if I'm watching something which I gave maybe only a four or five or a six out of ten to because I've got all these possibilities for it to climb up higher. The sky's the limit. Whereas if it's something I rated really highly, there's a greater chance of it going backwards in my esteem. I actually feel exactly the same way, Saul. The idea of rewatching some of my favorites can almost feel a little bit daunting. You know, I really want to have the right mood set and I really don't want, you know, a film I've dearly loved for a long time to fall in my estimation. That's almost a little bit of a threat. So it can be a little bit of a scary exercise. And on the topic of films that I just didn't care for that much the first time and I feel I misjudged, if for some reason I would get that idea that I severely misjudged a film. Perhaps I didn't give it the attention it deserved, or perhaps I picked up some angle to get into that film that makes it seem more appealing. I might even have an urge to go back there. I mean, this often happens. For instance, if I watch more films by the same director, for instance, and I really love some of those films, and I start to think, like, why didn't I get that reaction to this film I watched five or ten or even more years ago? Was I just not in the right mood for it? then I will really, really want to put that on because it sounds a bit uh, extreme, but they don't want to have done it in an injustice, essentially. Because if I love so many of the films, it feels like, okay, now I really need to go back and rewatch that film or rewatch those two, three films because those are that director's most recognized films. And here I am loving some of their lesser work. I had a similar reaction to you, Chris, with some directors. I'm thinking particularly of Hiroshi Tashikahara, 
and Woman of the Dunes. When I watched it the first time around, I thought that was a great film, but not a masterpiece. And then in the interim, I watched The Face of Another, which I absolutely loved, and Pitfall, which is another extremely good film. And I thought, well, I'll go back and give Woman of the Dunes another chance, and it's now in my all-time top 50. That's one that maybe I did misjudge a little bit, and watching some of the director's other films for the first time really helped cement into me what I liked in those films, and what I could then see in the director's most acclaimed film. And tying into both of those experiences, both the experience of seeing something you perhaps didn't like that much the first time, but then got elevated and suddenly became a favorite or you suddenly found much better than you originally thought. And the much less nice version where you see something you quite enjoy that just falls drastically. What would you say is the biggest factor in changing your opinion of a film? It's perhaps the evolution of my appreciation for cinema as an art form, as opposed to it just being an experience. When I was younger and I was working through the IMDb Top 250, a lot of the films that I didn't enjoy were ones that didn't necessarily have a big wow factor, perhaps a big twist or something that really grabbed me. More of the subtle films that perhaps have great artistry, excellent cinematography, more subtle stories, didn't really have a profound impact on me. I'm thinking of films like Hitchcock films, Notorious and Rebecca, they didn't sit well with me and I feel like I need to go back and revisit them. Other than that, because I don't re-watch many films as it is, I can't really recall any occasions where I've been too harsh on a film the first time round. There doesn't really seem to be a reason for falls and rises with things that I liked or didn't like. For some of them, it's definitely experience or life experience, but generally, I actually don't know. It can be completely random. I'll just revisit a film randomly and I'll love it or I'll hate it and I have no idea why. There's a couple things like overly sentimental music is something that really grates on me now. But when I was younger, I could generally ignore it. But now, as soon as it happens, I actually just can't deal with it. So that's definitely a thing that's taken away from some of my old favorite films, especially 90s films, which are really bad for that. I think the number one thing for me, which always changes my mind about a film, is expectations. I've had a large number of films that I've entered into with really high expectations that have ended up disappointing. And then when I've rewatched it later without so much buzz around it, I've come to like it more. And the same thing around, there are films I've entered in with super low expectations. And I was like, well, this is actually a really decent film. But then when I've gone to rewatch it, I'm like, no, it's actually not as good as I thought it was. My taste has evolved and has changed a bit over the years. But the uh, number one factor for me is always the expectations when I go in and sit down to watch a film. That's so interesting, Saul, because I don't really think expectation has that big an impact on my end evaluation of a film. It will probably affect it in some way and will certainly affect how I view how I feel about the film. For instance, if I find a film to be great, that might be a terrible disappointment if it's, you know, a really raved up film from one of my favorite directors, which I, you know, might have expected to put on, you know, my top five or top ten of the year. And then it's just a great film. Then it can be a horrible disappointment. But if it's a film I have almost no previous expectations to, perhaps had negative expectations to, that might be a very uplifting experience. I think expectations change how I view them, but it doesn't necessarily change how I feel about them. I think for me, there are two things that really changes how I experience a film. The first one is really just how my tastes have changed, maybe how my experiences have changed my taste, where I, as Tom, probably view films a little bit differently than when I first got into cinema, when I was perhaps more focused on, you know, simply the craft or simply the story. And now I might be looking at things a lot more in terms of the art of it. And second would be just how familiar I am with the material. So obviously something really, really impressed me early on simply cannot impress me as much today because, you know, I've seen 10, 20, 30, 40 plus films, maybe hundreds of films doing very similar things. So they won't be as striking. And lastly, and this is also one of the main reasons why I will go to rewatch a film, is if 
I somehow have gotten a better sense of what a film is trying to do. Because I think that it helps to have a certain degree of knowledge or understanding, even just as a visual reaction to how you're meant to engage with that film. Just to give a quick example of this, it's a bit like how if you watch a horror movie or a comedy, you have very different expectations to how you're going to enjoy and experience that film and you'll be watching them a little bit differently. You'll be reacting to dialogues and performances a little bit differently. But I think a lot of films, especially a lot of more artistic films, aren't as familiar. You don't know the rule book already. Usually this is a very natural thing, which I talked about earlier, in that you know I see more by the same director, and suddenly there might be just this one thing that clicked. To give a very specific example, I only used to love very specific Eric Romer films. But after seeing several of them, including some rewatches, I suddenly started getting his humor. And when I was also reading more about them and seeing how, for instance, he used to make every single film as an antithesis, essentially pick out something he believed in and then try to find the best argument against it and do these films as you know, a debate. That was another great entryway. And suddenly I was seeing these films in a very different light. So I had both the more visceral entryway into this work where I you know, was enjoying his humor more because I was understanding it, I was seeing it a very specific way. And then I also had this additional knowledge which I could bring to it and which made the films come alive in a way they hadn't before. This also made me rewatch several of his films and we got the great two-part podcast on his communism proverb cycle as well. So I really think that just finding that entry rate, understanding a little bit more what someone is going for can really, really change how you experience a film. I mostly disagree with that, but I do have one example was when I first watched Borat, I thought it was all scripted. And so I was just kind of like, eh. But then I found out that it was actually real reactions. And then it was really funny because it was completely different knowing that it was real. But generally, things like artistic understanding of the director or whatever, I like don't care about the director at all. And I don't really feel that consistency within any work from any director. So that kind of stuff doesn't really affect me. Neither does expectation, really. But I do agree that sometimes knowing something about the film or what it's trying to do on a rewatch can change your opinion of the film. I think a film can sometimes be enhanced by knowing a bit more about it. One I could use for my own life is Forrest Gump. When I first watched it, I didn't realise how much of it was archive footage that uh, Tom Hanks had been spliced into. But of course, re-watching it slightly older and realising all that, it actually makes you realise how clever a lot of it was. This is a very interesting topic, and one film I'd like to bring up is The Cabin in the Woods film that flaunts the horror conventions and is all the better for it and it is a film that I really enjoyed on first viewing enough that I wanted to re-watch it and on the second experience it was just as good as the first and I think that was because there was the anticipation of what was coming that kind of kept me engaged and interested so I think it's great that some films first viewing there's this surprise element that makes it work for you but then on the second viewing because you've loved it so much it can be the anticipation of what is about to come that makes you love it so much that's a great comment tom i'll actually go to what i'm building up a little bit to here which is the films that jumped the most for us or that fell the hardest so perhaps we can talk a little bit about a few films that you just thought was good or perhaps you even disliked but ended up absolutely loving. This is quite a struggle for me as I don't really re-watch many films that disappoint me on the first watch. One example though is Stalker, which although I didn't think was a great film on second viewing, I appreciate it far more than the first time I watched it. The first time I watched it was when I was working through the IMDb Top 250. I was quite young at that time and I think a lot of it went over my head. There's a lot of philosophical conversations and frankly I was quite bored of it. The second time round, it didn't blow me away but I could appreciate the philosophical angle a lot more and also the colour schemes and the kind of beauty and wonder of the film. It will never be a personal favourite but 
that rewatch did make me appreciate it a bit more. And I need to add as well, the uh, driving force behind the rewatch of Stalker was because I read the novel. The film actually followed the story of the novel very closely, but it was through reading it and getting a grasp of the author's ideas that made me want to rewatch it and improve my appreciation of the film. Like I said earlier, I don't often rewatch films that I didn't like, but there are a few that I've given another chance. So there were a couple that I rewatched for uni to do assignments on. One of those was Hiroshima Mon Amour, which I hated the first time I watched it. But the second time I watched it, I had a traumatic experience. And so when I rewatched it, it was like it just connected with me in all those ways because it got them so right. But the first time I watched it, I didn't see that. I saw like a really rubbish love story, stupid arty farty film. And then the second time it just worked really well and now it's a favourite of mine. And then on my own back, two films that I hated when I first started getting into film when I was about 14 were Casablanca and Before Sunset. And both of them I gave about a 2 out of 10. I just thought they were like total trash. But I hadn't realised that Before Sunset was a sequel. So years later I watched Before Sunrise and then Before Sunset all of a sudden it went to a favourite. So I think it jumped from like a 2 to an 8. And the same thing happened with Casablanca. I don't even know what happened with Casablanca. I couldn't remember what I disliked about it. But again, it jumped to an eight from a two. It just all worked that time around. And another film was Suspiria, the original one, not the terrible remake. But the first time I watched it, I just really didn't like it. It was like really low budget and amateurish. And it just was just dumb. But then I kept thinking about it and I kept, I kept dreaming about it, the soundtrack and like the visuals. And then when I rewatched it, a few years later, again, it just, yeah, it all came together and worked really well. But those are the biggest jumps for me that have gone from like, I did not like this film or ever want to see it again to being a favorite. I have had some films which I disliked or I thought were mediocre, which have now become favourites, but none of them have done it over a single repeat viewing. The example I want to use here is Solaris, which, as I mentioned before, I rewatched this week. I've now seen it seven times. The first time around that I saw it, I had very high expectations. It was compared to 2001 A Space Odyssey. And when I first watched it, it would have been maybe 16, 17 years ago. That comparison, of course, you're going to go with mega high expectations. And it was almost an inevitable disappointment for me. But something kept drawing me back. And I watched it again a few years later. I liked it a bit more. Got some reservations. Watched it again a couple of years after that. I've just kept re-watching it. And it's now got to the point where Solaris, a film that I originally voted 5 out of 10 for on IMDb, is now in my all-time top three greatest films that I think I've ever watched. So I think it's just a, such a dynamic movie. When I finished re-watching it this week, I wanted to go back to the beginning and watch it all again because there's so many different elements in there. I think all of that was just expectations for me. And it's kind of interesting because Stalker, which Tom mentioned, is sort of the opposite for me. I loved that the first time round. I loved all the philosophical elements of it. And when I went back to watch it the second time, it was a lot less atmospheric than I remembered. It had really great ideas there, and that's what stood up in my mind. But everything took a lot longer to work out. And actually, I think it takes, you know, an hour for them to even get to the zone. And then I rewatched it this week, and it fell a bit further in my esteem. But I know what we're talking about fallers at the moment. We're talking about films that have risen. So, although I didn't hate it the first time around, I might give the example of The Social Network. When that first came out in cinemas, I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah, this is a good film. It's a solid film. I don't know why everybody's thinking it should win Best Picture at the Oscars. And it was only when I rewatched it after all the hype, after it lost Best Picture of the King's Speech, I was able to give it a fair set of expectations. And to the point where I think after three viewings, it's my top five films for the year. And like Lauren said with Casablanca, when I first watched Casablanca, I thought, yes, yeah, is a great film. I don't think it's the second best film ever made because I think at that point I was referencing the AFI of 100 films of all time. But uh, when I've come to revisit over the years, I think, yeah, it actually is a very solid film. It's not all time top two, but it is really good. And the whole expectations and the tempered expectations come into play there. I've actually had several films that changed really drastically, and many of those this year. When I decided to do a Robert Bresson rewatch marathon, 
That was an absolutely incredible experience because I saw these films in a completely different light. And I'm not sure why or what exactly changed. I know how I felt about them the first time. I thought they were very loathsome. I really hated that look in uh, many of his characters' eyes. I hated a lot of the minimalism that he put into the work that just felt a little bit too rough. It stopped me from engaging with the films in the way he probably wanted me to. Perhaps the main thing that changed is that I watched this quite early and that I now don't care as much for, say, characters or drama and I care more about the craft itself. And I had a little bit more understanding of how we stripped it back, though I don't really think that shaped the experiences that much. I think the first one I rewatched was Lancelot to Luck, which I almost thought was comical the first time. It was made almost the same time as Monty Python's and the Holy Grail. And, you know, the first scene when, you know, the riding on the horses, first time I saw it, I almost felt like it was, you know, a scene out of Monty Python because it didn't look great. And at that time, I just loved the visuals. The visuals were so important to me. And this film, it almost felt ugly because it's just so broken down, so mechanic and so stripped bare. But this time, not caring as much about the visual aspect, being more pulled into the minimalism, I just really enjoyed how he made the knight into tin boxes. And the way it clunks and clinks, the battle scenes, I think that just had a very different impact on me, where the first time just couldn't get involved. This time I was really fascinated, just completely immersed. And that went from a 5 to a 9 for me. And then I also saw... Largent, which I had also given a very low rating to and I also hadn't cared for. And that's a much more human film. This is about the power of money and how it corrupts. And it has some lead characters that go on a journey that could be very, very emotional. And first time I couldn't connect to it because I couldn't connect with that character. It was, again, so repaired. There were these statues. But this time I was focusing more on the actual cycle what was actually happening in the way he presented it. And once again, I was completely immersed, including, you know, the extremely efficient way he shoots violence. He doesn't even show any of it. There's one scene where a father slaps his daughter and instead of showing the slap, it shows her holding a coffee cup and you see it's spilling. And it's just this very efficient minimalism that really, really, really worked. I rewatched, I believe, six present films, some of which I liked, some of which I didn't like, and just all of them meant so much more to me this time around. So I think this is one of those times when my taste has changed so much that I just completely got caught up in a style that I hadn't before. And Bresden was also one of those directors which I had felt that way about a long time. I thought this was something I would really have loved. Why didn't I love it? I should go back. And in this case, I was proven completely correct. In many other cases, like I rewatched Vampire by Dreyer at least twice, I think. And that's a film that just didn't work for me. Same with Dovashenko's Earth. So sometimes it's just exactly the same experience. Other time, you can almost be blown away. So we've all built up a lot of the uh, vibes here. So let's just destroy all of that positive energy and focus on the tragedy of losing a loved one. Do we all have those films that we loved but rewatched and ended up falling from grace, falling in our estimation and leaving us mourning their loss? I haven't had an occasion where there's a film that I've loved that's completely fallen from grace. The most obvious one of these for me would be Wait Until Dark. I absolutely loved it on Fear View and it's such a tense film. But on repeat viewing, I was able to take myself out of it and kind of think about the logic behind it and the plot holes in the film. I remember reading one review online saying that the plot holes are big enough that Audrey Hepburn's blind character could probably see them. And I think that's brilliant. And it is a shame that the film didn't hold up as well on peak view. And I still enjoy it for what it is. It's a very tense experience. But going back to it made me realise that there are a lot of holes in the logic there. And just to clarify, it was a 9 out of 10 originally, and I think on repeat viewing it went down to a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I've had a few favourites not quite live up to the same amount of love, but only drop a little bit. There's only been maybe two favourites that dropped 
completely out of that. The first one was Amelie, which I first watched when I think I was 15 and I gave it like a 10 out of 10. But I rewatched it a few years ago and I barely liked it. It was just gross. And that's now a 5 out of 10. And that's me being really generous. And the other one is The Graduate, which was another 10 out of 10 that I gave when I was about 14, 15. But every time I rewatch it, it's just less and less funny to the point that now it's just really dumb and boring. And that one's sort of barely a six. Those are probably the only two top, top favorites that I don't want to go near again, I'm pretty sure. In terms of films that have dropped in my esteem, I think the biggest one is probably Chariots of Fire. When I first watched Chariots of Fire, I had very low expectations. I kept reading about it being one of the weakest, best picture winners ever. And you know that it should have never won, you know, Reds by Warren Beatty should have won instead and all that stuff going on. So I entered into it expecting it to be a very lousy film. And I was impressed with how generally well done it was technically, how well acted it was, and I found it really involving. Of course, you've got the very iconic music score for the running. Anyway, I went back a number of years afterwards and I rewatched it and I could not even believe what I saw it the first time around. I thought, wow, a lot of this is just really cheap melodrama. You've got a couple of really poorly developed love interests for the main characters. And I just couldn't get my head around how much I liked it the first time around. When I went in to watch it the second time, it was number one in my list of films from 1981. After watching it, I completely fell out of my top 10 films from 1981. So that would have been the biggest drop for me. So I don't actually have a drop that went from a favorite to a dislike or to a middling film. But they have had one drop in particular that went from being one of my very favorite films, potentially a candidate for, you know, my top 25 of all time, which just got utterly decimated to the point that you know it's not even in my top 10 20 or 30 of the year it was released in and that is unfortunately Soliaris and even worse it was a cinema view now I don't want to put all that down to the film itself because the first five minutes or so was projected without sound so it, it was already a bad start but this is one of those cases where a lot of the things I just completely loved the first time disappeared for me one of the things I was really fascinated by, I know is a common critique, is the car scene where it slowly fades from color to black and white as the car drives in you know, this futuristic city, which is really just, if I recall correctly, Tokyo. The first time I was really immersed in it, I was really caught up in just the movement and just general impression. The second time, I think I just went, yeah, this is just a regular city. And the magic was completely gone for me. It was more or less a demystification. It's still a great film. It's still beautiful in so many ways, especially so many of the scenes up in the space station, many of the special effects, the actual mystery. But it just didn't hit as hard. And it was definitely a case of shadowboxing. So it might be that if I watch it again, it will increase back up. But it was one of those cases where, you know, I had so much love for it already that, you know, I would be looking at even just the visuals. For instance, one scene is like, this is not as well composed as I originally thought. And it would be just hurt by my previous experience. So again, like I said, this may change in the future, but that really was the most extreme drop for me because it was a film I loved so dearly, which was just so extremely demystified. That's really interesting to hear, Chris, because one of the things that I disliked about Solaris so much the first couple of times around was that car scene. I thought, oh, this is just going on for way too long. It's got nothing to do with the plot. Why is it in there? The more and more that I've rewatched the film, the more and more I've loved that scene, and especially when it gets to the end at night. You can see like all the lights from the neon signs glimmering around. Yeah, I just think it really adds to the whole mood of it. And I just love the whole pacing of the film and how Tarkovsky does not make it a thriller. He's more interested in being more meditative and about the experience itself. So, yeah, no, I'm sorry to hear that. It is interesting because I watched Stalker also recently. It's got a similar scene where they're sort of like going in towards the zone and it goes from that brown and white into color. So that seems to be something that Tarkovsky likes quite a bit. Yeah, that's true, and I still love that scene from Stalker, which I also rewatched quite recently. But that's quite interesting as well. And I love the fact that you know our impression of that car scene got completely flipped on rewatch. 
So, winding down the conversation a little bit, I would also like to ask a little bit of a bonus question, which is, what is the shortest time between watching a film for the first time and rewatching it? For instance, have you ever watched a film twice in the cinema? And has this ever changed your opinion of the film? I've actually got a great example for this, Chris. Perhaps one of the only times I can recall where I've gone out of my way to watch a film twice in the cinema. And this was for Gravity. So the first time I watched it, it was just in a standard cinema and I was so immersed in it. It was an incredible experience. I absolutely loved the film. It's such a visceral film and it really conjures up a wealth of emotions as you go through this roller coaster ride. And it was so brilliantly shot. It looked amazing. The score was incredible too. Because I enjoyed it so much, I rewatched it perhaps a week or two later, but this time I rewatched it on an IMAX screen to make sure that I could get the most out of the experience. It actually improved because I was able to appreciate it on bigger screen, even better sound. Probably the only time I can remember where I've been to rewatch a film in cinemas, but I was so glad that I did. I did see a couple films multiple times at the cinema. The first one was Secret Window because I just really enjoyed it. I was 13 at the time and I went back a couple of days later to watch it again. I also saw Stalled three times in the cinema, but that was over a period of a few months. And I saw it at Fright Fest, then Monster Fest, and then I went to a Q&A where I got the hat from the film. But the actual shortest time I've gone between re-watching a film, if this counts, is... I watched From Dusk Till Dawn with the commentary and it excited me so much that I immediately then watched the film. I mean, it's my favourite horror film of all time, but yeah, the commentary just like got me going. I just had to rewatch it instantly. I love that you watched From Dusk Till Dawn with the commentary and that's now encouraged me to revisit it and watch it with the commentary. I do love listening to film commentaries and one in particular that really struck a chord with me was for Sunshine because it was done by the director Danny Boyle and Professor Brian Cox, and they were analysing the science behind the film. And a rewatch from that perspective does add so much to the film. You get the background of how it was made and some interesting facts and stuff, and it can enhance your appreciation of a good film. Yeah, the From Dust to Door one is Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. They're just very good conversationalists and they're very exciting to listen to, especially Tarantino. There's a few, yeah, little behind the scenes tidbits and things like that. But just listening to Tarantino talk about his filmmaking decisions or writing decisions is enough to get me excited over that. I don't really listen to commentaries all that often. It'd only really be if a film fascinates me a lot. Even then, I never usually watch the commentary the whole way through. I think the most recent film I can think of where I listened to the commentary the whole way through was Heartless by Philip Ridley with Jim Sturgis, which is an incredibly dynamic film. And just listening to the commentary as I was watching it again was just mind-blowing. And then when I re-watched the film some months later, it jumped all the way up into my all-time top 100. So it's a really great film that did really benefit from the commentary. Getting on to the question at hand, I think the only film that I've watched twice in cinemas was Munich, even Spielberg film. When I first saw it, it was an advanced screening of it. I remember I drove to the cinema myself. I was really excited that it was playing in late December rather than early January. And yeah, I thought it was a very good film. And then I was telling one of my friends about it and he was so disappointed that I didn't wait to see it with him. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize you wanted to see it that much. He's like, oh yeah, of course I do. I ended up seeing it again with him, which actually was really good. I did get more out of it, and I do think it is one of Spielberg's most dynamic films. Incredibly good music by John Williams and very different sort of music score. Other than Munich, I don't think I've seen any films twice in cinema. There are some where I've had maybe two months in between. Like I saw the uh, triplets of Belleville, Bellevue, I don't pronounce that. Hi, it seems someone called the French pronunciation police. So I'm here to tell you that it's pronounced the triplets of Belleville. Thank you for your time. I saw the uh, triplets of Belleville in cinema, and then I saw it a couple of months later on DVD, because it actually got released on DVD fairly similar time to when it came out in cinemas. And that was actually one where I actually wanted to show that off to other people and say, oh, what a great film this is. But yeah, generally, I would usually give it a year between films. I wouldn't usually watch it with only like a month or a few weeks in between. When uh, Tom was talking about being dragged back to Gravity, 
I, I came to remember the Phantom Menace, which both viewings were not my choice. Some friends of mine wanted to have a Star Wars marathon, and uh, I re- rewatched it. And then very briefly after, I don't remember, I think it might have been a month or two or three, to be fair, but The Phantom Menace was released in 3D for the very first time. And a lot of my friends really want to go. It was also going to be a social outing, so it went as well. And The Phantom Menace is obviously the worst Star Wars film. Uh, and it's not a particularly good film either. But I, I got to see that first on the small screen and then on the big screen in 3D. And by the way, I'm not a big fan of 3D. The things you do for friends, I suppose. A much more pleasant one, which was when I was much younger, I think I was a teenager, was that I rewatched the rest of our dogs twice in a row, first on the TV by myself, and then when it was shown the next day with my father, which was a great experience because unlike Phantom Menace, I quite like the rest of our dogs. But there was one just a couple of months ago, actually, where it was my specific choice. It was not triggered by any kind of social events, and they were literally back to back. And this is one of those rare cases where I instantly felt that I had missed something about the film, which was the Lucien Pintilli film, Why Are the Bells Ringing, Mitika, uh, also known as Carnival Scenes. I'm not sure if all of you have seen it, but it is a very hectic film. And, you know, the later films of Pantilli are also extremely, extremely hectic in general. So it's just this sensory overload of so many characters and so much dialogue and so many jokes that it's so easy to get lost in it. It ended up on a 7. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Luckily, though, I had one of the Pantilli films lined up, Palanta or The Oak which was his next film. And while I didn't love that, I found it great. Just as the film, just so high energy, so much happening. I really focused in and I realized the amount of focus I had to give one of his films. And I got so much pleasure out of just focusing on all the details and trying to follow who each person was and what was happening, that I actually went back the very same day I saw The Oak, put on carnival scenes, absolutely loved it. It's just such, like I said earlier, high energy film, but it's just when I actually absorbed it, when I could actually give it my full attention. And by the way, I was still struggling a little bit to realize who every single one of this endless character gallery was. It was so fascinating and funny, and it's just such a big film with so much happening. It, it's really just one of those things you just cannot take your eyes away from, because if you take your eyes away from it for just like a couple of seconds, something might be lost. So I think that was the big one. That's one where it actually changed completely for me again, because it went from a 7 to a 9 and became a favorite. So that was a very lucky rewatch. I feel sorry for you, Chris, that your rewatch in the cinemas was a film as awful as The Phantom Menace. I can remember when I saw it in the cinemas and was massively disappointed being a huge fan of the original trilogy. And I can't imagine what it must have been like being forced into watching it twice. (laughs) Well, luckily, it's uh, it's over and it's many years ago now. So to take us to our very last question, but also one we've saved for you, because this really is perhaps the most poignant question in this conversation. What are the key differences between re-watching a film and seeing it for the very first time. When I'm watching a film for the first time, I find it very easy to get lost in the moment, particularly if it's a film that I'm enjoying. I'll just sit back and be immersed in this world that the film director, everyone involved, created, and I absolutely love that feeling, but sometimes it can make me overlook aspects of the film that are perhaps lacking in certain areas. Now, when I re-watch a film because I know what's going to happen. I tend to spend more time analysing the film, perhaps looking at any foreshadowing that's in there and also analysing the hints. It, perhaps if there's a twist in the plot, hints at that or any clues that are left there in the script and, and dialogue. And just seeing how clever and how thoughtful a director and the scriptwriter have been in preparing their film, whether it all ties together nicely. So this means that I can sometimes appreciate the subtle nuances on a second viewing, perhaps in the performances, the camera work, or other aspects of the filmmaking. But you can also come to realise that aspects of the film aren't particularly remarkable on a second viewing. And that is perhaps 
one of the key reasons for me and why I don't want to rewatch a film because there is a tendency for me to overanalyze it, pick holes in it, and not enjoy it as much as I did the first time around. Yeah, I feel similar to Tom. I generally, like, if a film grabs me, then I let it take me away into its world and do its thing. And on a rewatch, I guess I have the expectation that it's going to do the same thing. But I will start to look around just the plot because I'm, I'm more plot and character oriented than the artistry or the filmmaking. But I do like to look at how the film has been constructed to give me this experience. So on a rewatch, I'll be trying to pay more attention to that or think about why it connected with me a certain way on the first time. Whereas I like the first viewing to be as blind as possible. Generally, I know just a one to two sentence plot summary and maybe the genre, and that's about all I like to know. But on a second viewing, I go in with maybe I've read other reviews, I've read other interpretations, I've thought about the film myself. So it comes loaded with all this other stuff and I can't go into it quite as blind. But I still feel that generally I won't pick up on the laws for a film that I love until it's been a few rewatches like I usually won't pick it up on the second time it's usually the third time that's when the like little niggly things will start to be like really annoying like jokes that weren't very funny the first time on the third time they'll actually hurt me and if yeah there's that annoying sentimental music by the third viewing I'll have had enough of it yeah that's the biggest difference for me I think a lot of it depends on the type of film and how long you've left between viewings as to how watching it for a second time affects you. I am now in the position where I can watch films that I haven't seen for 17 or 18 years. They could be acclaimed classics. It would be like revisit a faded dream or like faded memories of the past. It can be nice in that sort of way. If it is a favorite or if it is something that i've seen more recently then a lot of it's going back and trying to find the different clues that connect things up together especially if it's a mystery film or it's looking for like all the small subtle details a great one is in scream 2 there's a sign in the dormitory which craven sort of cuts off and it's going to say no eating in the living room but the way that it's cut off it says no living there's a lot of really fun really small techniques like that which with all-time favorites you do pick up on with subsequent viewings but i think with other films we have left it a bit of a while before going back it's like trying to like revisit that great dream that you've had and you've forgotten and try to like fill in all those blanks once again yeah, I think you're completely right there, Sol, in that how long it's been since you watched it and how much you remember from it changes everything. Because if it is a film you love, you will be shadowboxing that. And like with me and Solaris, that will haunt that film. But there are films I rewatched where I have completely forgotten who the killer is, how it ends, who ends up alive, or any kind of massive plot elements. And sometimes that's great. Like, I, I remember rewatching a couple of Godard movies for uh, one of our previous podcasts now. And I like that essentially all of them exactly the same as the first time, but I had forgotten almost everything about them. So I think it's really interesting how that works. So sometimes you're shadowboxing, sometimes you're having almost a first-time viewing experience again. Oh, oh, and one more thing, and this will annoy Tom a little bit because he's the film purist. But on rewatches, I actually become a film purist. On first-time viewings, I won't necessarily see them in one viewing. My attention may be elsewhere, and it's quite likely I won't have try to you know facilitate the cinema experience but if i take the time to actually re-watch a film i will make sure that there's no distraction that i get to see it in one viewing and that all of my focus is on that film so that has nothing to do with the real question of what fundamentally changes with the film itself but it's certainly a massive change in how i view that film I think I'm kind of the opposite. I think I'm more likely to multitask and not properly focus on a film the second time around or the third time around if I've already seen it and I sort of know what's going to happen. Whereas the first time around, I sort of don't know what the more talky bits of it are. So I don't know when would be a good time to pause it. I don't know when would be a good time to eat a meal while watching it. Whereas if I've seen the film before, I sort of have more of an idea about the parts of it where I might not need to pay as much attention. 
Yeah, I'm the same. The, the first viewing is like 100% focus and then a rewatch, especially if, it, if it's just, you know, having a good time with a favorite, my purism goes down a little bit. And I might just say that misremembering a film is one of my favorite parts of it because that's the closest you get to being able to experience it again for the first time. If you've confused it with another film, if memories are blurred together, if you can't remember who the killer is, we can remember, but you can't remember how exactly it all played out. That's the closest you actually get to having that pure experience again. So I love it when I misremember a film. Unfortunately, my memory is a little bit too good for that to happen that often at this point in my life. That actually made me think of a bit of an interesting question. Have you ever misremembered a film in the sense that you think someone else, for instance, is the killer? Or that, you know, you completely transplanted a plot element from another movie so that you're suddenly shocked. It's essentially not just the first time viewing, but it's a complete inversion of all of your expectation. I don't think that's happened to me, but that would be such a great, great experience. I don't think that's happened to me, but that again would be an excellent experience. One thing that uh, your conversation has reminded me of, though, is there was a time, maybe about 10 years or so ago, when I watched The Last Circus, and I was incredibly drunk at the time that I watched it, so much so that I basically forgot everything that happened in the second part of the film. I woke up the next day thinking that I really, really enjoyed the film, but I couldn't for the life of me remember what had happened. So I did actually watch it the next day, and luckily I enjoyed it as much the second time. But that is quite a rare occasion for me. I just thought it was worth mentioning. I've never really misremembered any important parts of a film, but I did just remember that I watched The Abyss when I was a kid, and I could have sworn that there were anglerfish in that film. And I rewatched it specifically because I wanted to see the anglerfish again. And they weren't in there, and I don't know where I got that from. So I don't know if I made that up, or I dreamt it, or it was in another film, but I've never been able to find these damn anglerfish. So that made me pretty sad. I've had some interesting things with misremembering because of director's cuts. I've had it with Terminator 2. The first time I ever saw it was the uh, James Cameron, you know, final cut of it, whatever he wants to call it. And then I remember re-watching it, and you certainly don't have the parts about Terminator being a good father and all these other things. And I'm like, oh, did I misremember that? Was it there? And then I watched it, I think, on a DVD release afterwards, and suddenly the stuff was back in there. And I realized that I saw an alternative cut of the film. I can't think of a specific time when I have misremembered who the killer is. Sometimes I've misremembered certain parts, like in North by Northwest. I didn't quite remember all the twists and turns in there. With Death on the Nile, which I rewatched recently, I remembered who the killer was, but I couldn't quite remember why or how and how all the different parts and bits and pieces fitted together. So it was just lovely seeing that play out again, even though I knew who the killer was that time. Yeah, that really is one of the best things about rewatching when you've forgotten really get that experience one more time of trying to figure everything out and it's also interesting if you remember one or two key scenes and then you're trying to figure out how they fit in and how they got there you most likely not have a single clue i'm not one of those people who get really focused on the story at least anymore i think i've distanced myself a little bit from that so even on the first time viewing, I might pick up some of those errors. But obviously, the more time you see a film, the more focused you become on all those things and the more glitches and errors, anything else that might be bothersome will come up. And that is obviously quite frustrating as well. Though, though to me, it is also a fascinating question of the rewatch where you do see a film for the second time. But at the same time, it is the very first time, that is the, your first rewatch, that you see that film knowing what will happen. You know, unless you've actually forgotten it, like we talked about. But there's this idea that this is the very first time you can actually piece together everything in the puzzle and see if there are clues or see how everything moves towards the ending you know. I think that's a really fascinating idea of that very, very first rewatch. I guess if you wanted to be philosophical, every viewing of a film is a first-time viewing because you're never able to mimic or completely replicate the conditions that you watch the film in to begin off with. That could be whether you're seeing in the cinema versus DVD, whether you're seeing it knowing what happened beforehand or not knowing what happened beforehand. It's always going to be a completely different experience, and everything that's happened to you in the meantime will shape the way that you perceive it. And the best example that I could think of for that in a film is in 12 Monkeys 
where Bruce Willis and Madeline Stowe go into the cinema and they rewatch Vertigo and they comment that it's the same film, but you know, it seems different. The film hasn't changed, it's a static object, but everything that's happened to us in the meantime, everything that we know going into it automatically changes our perceptions. And with that beautifully poetic note, I think our episode on rewatches has come to the end. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will re-listen to this episode again and again and again and join us again and again and again. You have been listening to Talking Images, the official podcast of ICMforum.com.